Scylla comes before her husband when she's named. One of them, Phoebe, is called a deacon in her church. One of them, Junia, is counted among apostles with her husband. Ten women are mentioned. So don't anybody ever say that Paul is a chauvinist or that Paul is against women in serving in positions of leadership in a church. Even though Paul is the same guy who would say women should not have authority in the church, and he writes that letter, he writes that statement to the church in Corinth, and he's in Corinth when he's writing this letter to Rome. See, even though Paul says there are certain places where men need to serve and women shouldn't serve, even though Paul would say something like that, he says, listen, if you've been gifted, serve wholeheartedly. Get into it. Work hard. Do the thing. So Paul mentions 10 very significant women, and he's like, yeah, you go, girl. So all of that comes down to the end, and none of this chapter 16 stuff is essential to the message of Paul, and that's why he concluded in 15. And then he comes to the very end of 16, and he gives us one extra little concluding piece to remind us about the gospel. And what I want to do for us today is I want you to enter into a time of reflection as I read these final verses over us. Because these final verses recognize that God is the one who came up with the gospel. God is the one who empowers us to live it, and he's the one who gets all the glory. And we just get to be in it. So I'm going to read these words over you and invite you to enter into a time of reflection as we lead into our offering and our final song. Now, to him who is able to establish you in accordance with my gospel, the message I proclaim about Jesus Christ in keeping with the revelation of the mystery hidden for long ages past, but now revealed and made known through the prophetic writings by the command of the eternal God, so that all the Gentiles might come to the obedience that comes from faith. To the only wise God, be glory forever through Jesus Christ. Amen.